Hey, y'all. I'm Bud Elliott, and this is my College Football Summer School Series on Cover 3. I bring on the team experts from the 24-7 sports staff and ask them the questions I care about. No fluff. Which players will be toughest to replace? What position groups are sneakily better or worse than I realize? We get you the scoop on each team in 20 minutes or less. Let's go. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Cover 3 College Ball Podcast. I'm Bud Elliott. That's Steve Robertson. That means we are talking Mississippi State. He runs Gene's page. You guys, if you're watching on YouTube, you see that QR code. In the bottom corner, click that. Check out the absolute best Mississippi State coverage there on the internet. And we're talking a really interesting Mississippi State football team that last year you know went nine and four. All the power ratings legitimately had them as a top fifteen you know rated football team. Had the tragic passing of, of Mike Leach, unfortunately one you know, I mean college football's best characters. Steve, welcome to the show. Really, really appreciate the time. It, it it's an interesting time of, of transition uh, for for the Bulldogs. Oh, it is. And uh, I think Mississippi State made really the only decision they could make under the circumstances. I mean, Zach Arnett is extremely popular with the fan base, more importantly, with the locker room. I mean, I think the the team really kind of rallied behind him. Uh, There was some poaching issues. You know, some people were trying to kind of exploit the situation with Mike Leach's passing and perhaps, uh, you know, influence a player or two to enter the portal. And, And so you elevate Zach Arnett from interim head coach to full time head coach. He stabilizes the roster delivers a top 25 recruiting class and put together what we think is a pretty uh, pretty talented staff, especially with Kevin Barbet now as your offensive coordinator. So Bulldogs offensively will look a lot different than they have here the last uh, few years. But there's a lot of optimism in Starkville these days. I, I am curious about the offensive coordinator. Hire. We'll, we'll jump in there. Last year, Mississippi State had, had a quality offense. I mean, the defense was better than the offense was, but they were both both good units, uh, to at, le- at least per, per my numbers. He does go Kevin Barbe from App- Appalachian State, and that's a pretty drastic change from what Mike Leach was running. For those of us who haven't followed quite as much, I, how drastic of a change could you describe this for the folks at home? Well, it's pretty drastic in many respects because there's going to be a lot more balance. You know, State kind of ran the football to keep you honest, but that's going to be a big tenet of the Barbe system. And you don't have any tight ends, right? I mean, so, you know, that was a big focus this spring is you had some guys that are maybe young tackles that will serve as an attached tight end. Uh, you get Ryan Godet to transfer in from Georgia, very talented player, doesn't have a ton of snaps under his belt at Georgia, but uh, that's a guy that shows up on campus as TE1 just by entering a transfer portal and signing a scholarship, you know? And so, uh, so formationally, things will be a lot different. It's going to be a lot more two back sets. We really believe that Woody Marks is, uh, it's kind of an unproven commodity in many respects in this conference, kind of a dark horse. I believe he'll be a star in this scheme. And by the end of the year, I think most people in the Southeastern Conference will know his name. He's led the team in receptions, but uh, he's a ball carrier by trade and, and uh, has been a great teammate, and really a leader. Uh, there was discussion last year that he might leave. Uh, Dylan Johnson did leave and go to Washington, but uh, Mark stays. And I think he truly benefits more than any other player on offense with this new Barbe system. So luckily for for State, they get back Will Rogers, who's one of the more accomplished passers in the SEC. Now, he hasn't played in this system, but it would seem he'd be able to throw a lot off play action. Uh, How did he look in in, in spring with with the new deal? I don't know if I've ever seen him throw the football better than I did at Pro Day. Um, Really, really, really impressed with him. And uh, listen, the concepts of the air raid are going to continue in the passing game. It's just the play calling is going to be a lot more balanced. And so it still fits his skill set. They're not going to ask him to do something that's drastically different than they have the last few years. And this is a guy that's put up some huge numbers. But I think he benefits from this, too, just because of the fact that I think the reads will be different. I think State can get you into some mismatches, perhaps, that are advantageous to the offense. And Will's a guy that has seen it all and done it all in this league. So you're not going to surprise him with a lot of you know funky fronts and things like that. I think he is a guy that maybe will prove this year that he is not a system quarterback. He is a bona fide SEC guy that can put up big numbers. Receiver scares me a little bit if I'm just going over the depth chart here. They they do lose what three of their top four receivers. It maybe it's a good time to go away from throwing football quite so much, given what what they lost. How does this position look to you? Well, they allocated so many receiver spots, you know, in the class. So there is some depth there. Tulu Griffin's a guy that. Uh, you know, very explosive guy, but he's been underutilized. I mean, they had him outside, and he is uh, he's a slot receiver by trade. The very, one of the very first questions I asked Chad Bumpus when he arrived from Utah as a new receivers coach is, what do you plan to do with Tulu Griffin? 
he looked at me and he said, he is a slot receiver. Well, that's music of the ears of the fan base, because that's what people have kind of said for the last two years. And this, this spring, they, they brought him some on the backside of the formation, uh, handed him the football, kind of gave him the, the puff pass and things of that nature. So they're going to get him in space and allow him to create. We think he's a guy, too, that's going to have a, a big year. Justin Robinson's a guy that came on down the stretch last year, former Georgia Bulldog, uh, really big, physical, ex, kind of a jumbo X almost. And uh, he had a great spring, really excited to see what he can do. And you know, State doesn't win that ReliQuest Bowl against Illinois without a good game from Justin Robinson. So I think the first group, is really good. I think the second group is kind of a work in progress and something once they get into fall camp, they'll have to flesh out a little bit. Makes sense to me. The, the offensive line returns most everybody. They lose the left tackle and, and, and the center, but a lot of guys who had a good number of snaps. And Nick Jones actually played a good bit more uh, than, than Johnson did last season. I think, what, did Johnson get hurt? I'm trying to recall here, the, like why why he only had 350 snaps. Um, but they should be fairly decent up front assuming they can they can handle the scheme change which go into you know, running as much stretch zone as they're going to run assuming they run what app ran I, I watched a decent bit of app last year uh a, a stretch zone yes I, I i assume with with a lot of the zone run scheme and and how's the offensive line uh transition to that well i think the guys are happy not to have to pass block you know 75 times a game you know offensive linemen want to fire off the line and plow people in the ground and really, the only the only starter you truly lose is LaQuinson Sharp, the center, which is that significant, though. I mean, you know, Q's a guy that's been in this league a long time. He had the bonus year uh, because of uh, he was granted a, a medical hardship year by the NCAA. So the last year he was back. So you lose that leadership and being able to make those checks. But, um, you know, Stephen Lasoy is a guy that they, they uh, played there some last year when Sharp was down. Cole Smith's a guy that started in the early years of the Leach era here. He has kind of been uh, competing there too, so it you know, could be either one of those guys. But you know, by and large, they've done a great job recruiting offensive line the last few years, and so I feel like that that group will be pretty solid and, and probably one of the stronger personnel groups on the team. I, I'm I'm really fascinated to see how this works out because they, they do return a, a lot of guys on offense, and if they get the scheme, if they get the scheme down pat and they're comfortable in it, and if the tight end issue that you mentioned is not is not too, you know, too much of a hindrance that they could be somewhere in the ballpark of what they were last year, right? I, I would think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, and really, I, some people have said, well, you know, it's the first year. Uh, the bottom line is defensively, you you pretty much returned that staff intact, except for the defensive line. You bring in David Turner for his third tour of duty in Starkville. And this is a guy that recruited and trained and cultivated and developed Chris Jones and Fletcher Cox. I mean, this is a guy that routinely puts guys in the National Football League. Uh, David Turner is a guy that fits at Mississippi State. His value system kind of resonates with recruits and you know, families in this area because he's kind of a small town guy himself. And so uh, I, I think, you know, really the story of this team is going to be, as you mentioned, how quickly can the offense get up to speed and run the full expanses of the playbook? If they have to dumb it down early on, that's to be expected. By the time you get into SEC play, you need to be able to run the full complement of the playbook, and that's going to be Barbe's biggest challenge this fall. Absolutely. So defensively, you mentioned that defensive line. That's, that's, that's where I want to go. They lose six of their top seven guys by snap count off the defensive front, or at least the guys who are 275-plus. So, like, your, your, your big dudes, six of the top seven are gone. What? What is the freakout level there uh, along the defensive interior for State? Well, really not much because, you know, Jaden right. State's best defensive lineman, but he missed most of the year last year to injury, and uh, he's back up to 100%. He's a future NFL guy and a guy that David Turner has uh, been very impressed with in the spring. So he's not included in those numbers, but he is the guy that most people would say is State's probably best NFL prospect. Uh, and then, you know, you've got a couple other guys too that, uh, you know, DeMonte Russell is a guy that, kind of came into his own later in the year, but he's a guy that's going to have to take a bigger role. And you know, where I'm concerned really more than anywhere else is really on the edge. You know, how do, how do they you know, police the edge? How do they rush the passer without just kind of selling out? Of course, the scheme itself kind of lends itself to being blitz crazy and blitz happy. You know, you're not going to drop back into, uh, you know, drop eight very often. The state's going to bring pressure from somewhere on just about every snap. So, uh, the scheme itself, I think, kind of covers up some potential deficiencies at the edge, but you really need somebody to emerge as a sure enough pass rusher there on the edge, and that could be Russell. 
obviously state with, with, with they, they run that you know the three down stuff but quite a bit with with, with tyrus wheat lo- leaving as well is there somebody from the outside backer position that you would expect to maybe pitch in there as well yeah that, that's a great question i think that's one of us that's one of those position battles that'll go into the fall I, I think you feel really good you know with uh Buki watson and jad johnson i mean they return as the, t- the top two most productive tacklers in the southeastern conference but a lot of that too is because people had to account for Tyrus Wheat. How does that impact things? You know, I think that's a positional battle that uh, probably won't be settled until maybe install for the first week. But um, you know, th- there's a few names there. I mean, Ty Cooper is a guy uh, that they feel really good about. Um, you know, J- John Harris is another guy that, um, you know, that there's just John Lewis. Excuse me. There's some numbers and names there. There's not a lot of production, so there's some talent, and it's going to be about finding the right mix. But you feel great about your other two spots, but that Tyrus Wheat vacancy could be uh, could be a burr in the saddle. Yeah, I, I on my stats page, Tyrus Wheat kind of jumps off the page at me. He, he led the team in double teams faced, so like it, opposing offenses definitely feared him quite a bit. And despite that, he also led all the edge rushers in havoc created. So if you're getting a lot of double teams and you're still beating them, I mean, that's that's certainly a guy we're gonna be watching to see how the, how they replace. In, in the secondary, Steve, they, they lose quite a bit, uh, and I, I know they recruit the position very well. Uh, they lost Emmanuel Forbes to the draft, Colin Duncan, uh, Jalen Green, Jackie, Jackie Matthews, Sean Preston, and uh, and Furge are, are all, I believe, gone, right? that's That seems like a lot. Is there a reason for hope here that they, they won't have a big drop-off? Well, Preston and Furge are still here. Uh, oh, they are? Okay. That is the biggest concern. That's why I love summer school. I apologize. I, yeah. I had them off my roster. Well, that's that's the biggest concern on the entire team is what do you do in the secondary? The Cameron Richardson, we think, is a future NFL guy. I mean, Martin Emerson and Emmanuel Forbes have both been drafted in the last two drafts. The Cameron will probably have a good enough year to come out this year. But what do you do around them? State hit the portal really hard. They invested in some scholarship spots and uh, you know getting some guys in. And I don't know that anybody has really taken ownership yet uh, of some of those positions. Furge is a guy that has really competed hard and they haven't been able to run him off. I mean, he's one of those guys you think this kid's going in the portal every single year and he just won't leave. He just keeps hanging around. Uh, Speedy Banks, you know, former Alabama uh, corner has made the move to safety, which has allowed him the ability to kind of create a little bit more. I talked to him a couple of days ago. He loves the position uh, change. So you feel good there, but you worry about the depth. I mean, you really do. Sean Preston's a guy that's been a really good run stopper in coverage at times. He's been a little bit shaky. Uh, but yeah, you lose a ton there, and it would be irresponsible to get on here and say, "Oh yeah, that secondary is going to be great." Hey, the talent's there to be good, but there's no evidence outside of the Camry on Richardson that you look at and say, "Hey, this is going to be a strong point." That's the biggest challenge for this defense as they get in ready to fall camp is how do you shore up the secondary and how do you settle the two deep? So I, I usually ask this question on the show. Last year, the defense was better than the offense. Is that still the case in your ex- expectation? I think it probably is right now just because you're making the change schematically on offense. I mean, Matt Brock takes over as a defensive coordinator. Of course, Zach Arnett will still have his fingerprints on everything. Uh, but it was Matt Brock calling the plays in the Reliant Quest Bowl against Illinois when State set a season high for sacks in the ball game. So that the continuity of terminology and a philosophy on defense really kind of lends itself to thinking this defense has a chance to be really good, especially if they can find a couple bodies in the secondary to – uh, to make some plays and offensively because it is a new system no matter how simplistic it may be and no matter uh, what a great job Barbe did in his one year at Appalachian State because their numbers were ridiculous compared to what they were the year before but can he do that two years in a row and that that's really the challenge so I think yes the defense will be ahead of the offense for much of the year the hope is once you get into the month of October you're kind of getting up to speed offensively and then uh, the offense can carry a little more of the load no doubt about it I, I always ask where is the spot other than the quarterback position where the drop off between starters and backups is pretty extreme and they just they, they cannot afford injuries? Well, I think it's probably a linebacker, to be quite honest with you. And we talk about the secondary, you know what you have in proven commodities of Buki Watson and Judd Johnson. But if one of those guys goes down and you know, you're basically asking a special teams guy or a role player guy, JP Purvis is a guy that had some big moments last year as a reserve. Uh, but he hadn't been able to win a job, you know, but he is a guy that's a good depth guy. But if you have to rely on those guys, no matter how much experience they have, uh, where does that leave you? Because, you know, Bookie Watson's a very, very talented player. And Judd Johnson's just one of those guys that 
he just kind of quietly goes out there and puts up 10 tackles a game. And no, nothing's ever flashy about it. He's got this blue collar appeal to him. But if one of those guys goes down, I, I think it really makes a difference with this defense because you're already having to replace Wheat. I just don't know if they have the talent and depth to absorb having to replace two uh, starting linebacker spots this year. That, that makes a lot of sense. I, Steve, I, we, we mentioned this on the show uh, when the hire was made. and I, I do have a, a bit of a question about the Barbe hire with, you know, with Arnett being a, a defensive coordinator, elevated the head coach, and the, the, the scheme being so drastically different for the most part, uh, both in terms of what they're running and, and the, the splits with the run pass from what Leach ran. Like, is there any worry in your mind that there is some like must champ Pruitt going on here where you see a, a guy, defensive coordinator, gets elevated head coach, and they're like, hey, let's call the offense to benefit the defense as opposed to let's have the offense go go score points. You know what I'm saying? Like you hear some of these defensive coordinators sounds like, let's run the ball a bunch. And it's like, I mean, the game's kind of a passing game now, right? Like, like not that you don't need balance, but is there a worry in your mind that, that there's like some must champ proof potential here? Possibly. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable concern because, you know, I know Arnett wants to run the football more. And, you, of course, coming from the defensive side of the football, you understand – a lot of that is to save wear and tear on the defense. And there were times last year, especially games the state struggled. I mean, I, namely, I remember Kentucky. Defense is just playing absolutely lights out. The same thing for LSU. People forget state had the lead in Baton Rouge in the fourth quarter. And you muff a punt, next thing you know, the game's over. And uh, state just couldn't score. But the reality was defense is going out there getting you stops. And they weren't getting enough help from the offense. And so I think you're going to see some more, not just balance, but I think more of a commitment to the run just to save some wear and tear on the defense over the course of ball game in the season. I think that is a, a reasonable concern, but also probably a reasonable strategy because there were times last year when State played exceptionally well on defense for three quarters and just wore down in the fourth. Makes a lot of sense. Steve, really appreciate you joining us here on Summer School. Everybody check out Gene's page, and we'll be seeing you soon.